Welcome everybody to Math Art Challenge number three. Uh, this is uh, going to be a Celtic knot, which is going to be brought to you by the uh, humble circle as well, as well as parallel lines. So we're going to do a technique in the final product that'll look a little bit like that. Uh, and what's interesting about this technique is it's really uh, going to be helpful for you if you want to do more uh, complicated ones afterwards. And I'll show you links to that. Like you can see that this one is just part of this cross as well. So that's going to be our goal today. We're going to do it all freehand. Uh, if you have a ruler, uh, that's probably better. But I want to do it uh, to show you that you don't need a ruler just in case you don't have one. All right, well, let's get started. Our goal is to make a two by three rectangle. All right, so, uh, you know, I'm just gonna kind of draw it out. I wanna, I got this distance, gonna try to cut that right in half. And then I wanna copy that over and over and over. Okay, I think about there. All right, so that's what I, think is going to be a decent two by three and there we go uh, perfect and you know you might want to erase your lines at the end so you might want to write light but I'm gonna write um, heavy so you can make sure you see it okay so now we're gonna put little circles or big circles doesn't matter um, at all the intersections now the smaller the circle, the thicker the, the knot. The bigger the circle, the thinner the, the width of the knot will be. Okay, so we'll do all the, and you want the circles to all be the same size. I'm trying to make them about the same size. Then we wanna go into the center of each little square and make another circle. Uh, again, uh, about the same size. And there we are. Okay, so when you look at this grid, um, what you want to see are these diamond shapes. We have a diamond shape here, a diamond shape here, got a diamond shape there. Uh, all in all, uh, you know, I'll, I'll draw one over to the side. So let's see, you want to be looking for this shape here. And inside, what we're going to do is we're going to draw what's called a tangent line. Uh, and it'll look like that. And tangent. We don't want to draw it on the inside of the circle. It'll always be on the outside. So this word I just used, tangent, means that the line touches the circle right on the outside in one place. So that's what it means to be tangent. It just kind of crosses that edge of the shape, but it doesn't go inside the shape. So we're going to do those uh, wherever we can. So let's just start one. Uh, why don't we just start it right here. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw it right to the edge of the circle. And we're good there. All right. Uh, now everything we're going to do from here is going to be, we're going to create like a T juncture. So what I mean by that is now we're going to do this one. And there's your, your T juncture. So we have another, uh, another one here, so we'll draw that. You always need four circles to draw the line. So here we've got another diamond, so we'll do a T juncture down. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make these two lines parallel, hence the, the parallel lines. In fact, we did this in our math class when we were studying parallel lines. Okay, so I have one that's going this direction. So I want to draw one that direction. There we go. Here's another grouping of four. So I'm going to draw it this way. And we have another group of four here. I'm going to draw it that way. Now, Done at this point, because I'm not going to draw here, I'm not going to draw a line up here because I don't have four circles up in this area. I only got three circles. So that part's done. Now what we want to do is start to create the rest of the knot. 
you can kind of see how this bottom one's going to go, right? It's going to be coming down here and it's going to curve that direction. It's going to go that way. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to kind of put it there and then run the outside, try to get it to follow so its thickness remains constant. There's like a divot in my board, but um, good enough. Uh, similar up top. Uh, let's do that. And just trying to keep it towards the same thickness. I don't really care if it goes outside my rectangle. Okay, so now we've got our only thing left are our edges. So you can kind of see what it's going to do. It's going to come up and it's going to curve and come back this direction, right? So I'll put that in there. Uh, but here's where I'm going to recommend that you... Uh, I'm going to go here, but instead of drawing it rounded, I'm going to put the sharp point like so. Okay, I like that look better. So I'm going to do that on this side too. Um, bring it around to a sharp point and then bring it across. Just like that. Similarly over here. And beautiful. And we'll do it to here as well. And voila. So that's the basic functionality of the Celtic knot. Uh, now what you might uh, do is, is go heavier on the lines. If you want to give it that a 3D effect, you can kind of shade it out a little bit afterwards. So you want to go really heavy on the intersection so it looks like it's kind of going under it. And then we will shade out again. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to shade that direction. Take this parallel line. Of course, parallel in mathematics means, or in general, means the same slope. All right, so let's take this one. I'm just going to darken the line. Okay, well that's the Celtic Knot. Again, hope you enjoy it. I'll link to some videos where you, if you want to do uh, more complicated ones. All right, well, take care and have fun.